again in my life. I'm going to have a full life. I trust trust and believe I am. And I'm going to enjoy myself. And it, you know, it's it, it, sports at one point in my life was a very big thing. And I couldn't miss a game and all that and all that. But nah, man, it's just fun now. It's something to talk to when I'm sitting in, in my man Big Illinois backyard. Or my significant other. You know, laugh and joke about it. Oh, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that, that, that don't get down. But when you got people sitting out here, man, who putting their lives on the line, man, big up to any of the athletes who are putting their lives in jeopardy for our entertainment, man, love to all of them. I know a lot of people, are they doing it for the check? Hell yeah, they doing it for the check. Because I would be doing don't think I wasn't dreaming. When I was dreaming of being a professional athlete, I wasn't doing it for the fans. I was doing it for the, the bread. The trophy and the bread. And uh, I, I don't think anybody's ever dreamed of anything and said, yeah, man, when I do this, I still be living in the projects. Hell no. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. So you, you guys really make me laugh at you when you go, oh, man, he's just doing it for the check. Yeah, well, you would too. But anyway, man, it's going to be an interesting situation. The first thing I want to talk about is everybody's talking about Zion Williams. Man, I got mad love for the, the young young boy, man. Young boy out there doing his thing. I hope he continues to do his thing. He's extremely exciting. But what really bothers me is, again, mainstream media takes a situation and turns it into uh, content. And everything is in content. And it wasn't a truly bad situation that I'm speaking of. It is a situation that comes down to being prone to injury. Me personally, when you're prone to injury, it's because every five seconds, every time we turn around, you're hurt. Zion Williamson had some freak incidents uh, that happened to him. And that does not make him injury prone. He had a situation where a shoe exploded off of his foot. He's so powerful of a young man, physically, that his shoe exploded. That has happened to Manu Ginobili and other athletes, but they are not 270 pounds jumping as high as Michael Jordan, f running as fast as Russ Rusbitt, and as big as Kyle Malone. It doesn't happen. It usually, doesn't, those are not the combinations. So, when you have that much on a traditional shoe, that much emphasis on a traditional shoe, it may not be prepared for that type of torque, and the shoe is exploded. Yes, you will hurt your leg if your shoe explodes and forces you to go left when your, your entire 270-pound uh, uh, frame was leaning right. You will hurt yourself. So that does not make you prone to injury. That makes you human. And I don't give a damn how long you play, what level you play on, and, and you're playing in the park, you're playing in high school, you're playing in AAU. You are going to roll your ankle and you're going to bump knees with somebody that's going to hurt. So... It just so happened he bumped knees on the same knee that he had previously injured. So they were taking precautions. But it really bothers me that they call this young man injury prone. He's had two situations. And I just don't, I don't make that injury prone. Now, has he been injured? Yes. It goes without saying. But is he prone to injury? I, I, I need two or three more situations. I need him to be hurt doing some nonsense, you know, just walking up and down the stairs and some nonsense like that. We've seen athletes. We've seen Derrick Rose turn into an injury-prone athlete where it was his knee, then it was his other knee, then it was his wrist, then it was his foot, then it was his toe. And okay, now that's prone to injury. But when you are participating in the athletic activities and you have a run-of-the-mill injury, I'm not going to put injury-prone on you. But they have to do that because then they have things to talk about. I told you, man. I told you guys at the beginning of this boo-boo flu thing in February, I'm not going to talk about the same thing. We got the week. And I've held true to it. Now, it's a bit of a stretch with me because I don't do this three hours a day, five days a week. But trust and believe, there's more than Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, LeBron James, the Dallas Cowboys to talk about. Man, I love Shannon Shaw, man. And I tolerate Skip Bayless. But there are there are 30 teams in the league. There are 1,800 football players. There are 450 basketball players. And I don't even know how many fucking baseball players it is right off the top of my head. And I'm doing the math in my head right now. But and then, hey, it's, you, you, can talk, you can talk about way more people than those people right there. 
Think about 700. What is hey, what is 25 times 30? About 700, if I'm not mistaken. Do the math for me. Somebody put it in the chat room and let me know. I think it's about 700, 750 or something like that. I ain't the smartest at math. But, so, they focus on the same people, so they have the same stories, and then they have to focus on minuscule parts of sports to make that three-hour segment go. When it's amazing how this is a sports network. They have several all-star level, Hall of Fame level, people who've been in, in management, mid-level players, high-level players, and what have you. And they talk about the exact same thing five days a week, and then they wonder why people like me attack them on Twitter or attack them on shows like this. It's kind of stupid. You know, why are you talking about the same thing seven days a week? And why does my voice sound like this? Damn. Okay, that's better. Okay, I needed some water. That's why my voice is sound like that. But yeah. Um, why are you talking about the same thing every week? But Zion Williamson is just one of the players in this upcoming NBA playoff situation. It's starting to round in the shape, man. And another thing, before I even get into the playoff situation, is this. This is something else I want to talk about. They've turned... They've... they've uh, turn this social justice thing into a, a joke again and people were warning them about turning this into a joke now they arguing about what's going to uh, be on the back of the jersey, they were supposed to have social justice messages and now they arguing about that, really? so now we arguing about slogans people are dying in the street cops killing people randomly you got a, a racist leader of the uh, United States and the best thing you can argue about is what the back of your t-shirt gonna say. Because guess what? You can go up step to the podium and you can have something to say. And every time they put a microphone in your face, you can speak about social justice before you talk about the game. And then it really doesn't make a difference. Your damn the, the name on your jersey can say Scooby Doo at that point. But we keep we keep getting caught up in nonsense. And it seems like that seems to be the pervading a uh, 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 mindset when we're dealing with these things. Nobody wants to deal with what's going on. We all want to deal with the nonsensical part of being in our community and dealing with these damn race race soldiers called the police. Yep, call them race soldiers. Deal with it. Don't like it. Uh, I'm gonna keep saying it. Sorry, but it's just it's just a situation where I don't want this thing to be turned into a mockery. You guys were talking this nonsense about yeah, man. Uh. We don't want this. We don't want the thing to go go away. But if you go sit around and argue about something as minuscule as what's what's on your back, you've made it into a joke already. It's a mockery. So I understand, Jalen Brown, you wanted to have input. But guess what, Mr. Brown? Uh, your player rep name is Chris Paul. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, I think her last name is Thomas. Miss Thomas, who runs the player association, you could have gave them a call, and you could have been part of the process. Instead of waiting on the end result and then complaining. Another thing we do too much in our community, but I don't want to get into our community on a sports show. But it's just, I know her name is Roberts, Michelle Roberts, I think. But it's just, we need to get out of here with that nonsense. It's bigger fish to fry, and we don't want to argue about this. But back to the playoffs. I think this thing is, if this thing, if no one gets the boo boo flu, as my man D Gray calls it, I think this thing is going to go off spectacularly, man. This is setting up to be one of the greatest playoff runs in the history of playoffs. A lot of people had an opportunity to get healthy. A lot of people being overlooked. Everybody looking at the Lakers. Everybody looking at the Milwaukee Bucks. Everybody looking at the Clippers and nobody else. But I'm here to tell y'all, I believe this is going to be something special. This is going to be insane. Somebody's going to get bumped off who shouldn't get bumped off. And it's going to be a shitload of fun. A shitload of fun, man. Like last week, we went through the, uh, y'all, I had y'all put in, who did y'all think were going to win? A lot of people said the Lakers or the Clippers versus the Milwaukee Bucks. I personally think the Toronto Raptors are going to get out of the East. But it's going to be interesting because we're all, uh, most of us overlooked the Philadelphia 76ers. The Philadelphia 76ers play well at home. They don't do well on the road. 
everybody at home now because they're in a bubble. So if you lose focus when you have to leave and go somewhere else, this is going to be an interesting situation then. This is going to be an insanely interesting situation and I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm I am I'm not gonna lie to you. If you know me, you know I'm rooting for LeBron James. Yep. I root for LeBron. I think, but y'all make me root for LeBron James. Y'all make me root for LeBron James, and the reason y'all make me root for LeBron James is y'all hate on him so much. I have never seen anybody get hate on like that in my life. I got a call calling in. Welcome to the end of the bench podcast. Talk to me. What's your name? What you want to talk about? Hello. Hey crap, what's good, man? It's Trey Frazier. Trey Frazier, this is my man Trey Frazier from the Barbershop Podcast. Talk to me, brother. Hey, bro. Uh, appreciate you having me on, man. I know it's been a long time since I've been on the show and everything. No, it's all good. Um, you, you're talking about the NBA and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Listen, man, I, 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 I got to say, as far as the bubble is concerned and everybody who's electing to play, I think the playoffs are going to be kind of interesting since there's no home court advantage and, you know, everybody's kind of playing on a neutral court and everything like that. Um, he talked about the Sixers and, you know, everybody overlooking them. Um, I think they do have a chance um, in terms of getting out of the East. they not necessarily won the championship, but mm-hmm. I do think that there's about four or five teams that's got a shot at uh, winning the Eastern Conference there. Uh, I think the Sixers are definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, all those guys have a chance to be healthy again, mm-hmm. um, you know, during this pandemic time, during this downtime. And then you got the Celtics who are young, um, energetic. Uh, Timber Walker's healthy now, so those guys are going to be a threat. And then, of course, Milwaukee's sort of the favorite in the East. Uh, Toronto with the championship pedigree, even though Kawhi's not there. Mm-hmm. Um, those guys now know how to win and they know what it takes to get to the championship, um, at least. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then you gotta look at a team like, um, like the Pacers, um, even though all the people's not gonna play, but, um, I, I know that when all the people came back earlier in the season before the pandemic hit, um, you know, they were kind of rolling there. And, mm-hmm. uh, it seems like some chemistry issues have kind of been taking place since he's been back for those, you know, those few number of games. So, um, so all in all, man, I, I think those teams got a pretty good chance. And I don't want to leave out the heat, too. Um, you know, Jimmy Butler there, who I think is probably the, uh, if, if not the second best, but the, you know, best wing player in the Eastern Conference. So you can't count the heat out. You really believe that he got a chance? I think the Heat are just a good at this point. I think the Heat are just a good, a good uh, uh, regular season team. I don't think they have no. I think what it takes. Like that. I don't think you're. I don't think you're too far off on that. I, I, I do think when you look at them and you look at how they're constructed, they definitely play some good team ball. I just think that. When it gets down to it, and you need a basket or you need a dude that can take over a game, um, Jimmy Butler has shown in the past that he can do that. Now um, he has yet to get to the finals um, while doing that, but mm-hmm. I do believe he has that DNA in him to, you know, take over a game or you know get the last shot if need be. I think, you know what I think he is? I think he is Scotty Pippen. It looks real good when you're standing next to a superstar, and it'll look real good when All you right. play alone. But when it's when the rubber meets the road, he needs a superstar to defer to. I don't think he has that type of uh, in his DNA. I think, I, uh, yeah, he's Scotty Pippen. He is uh, Steven Jackson. He is, I mean, we can think of a million and one, Paul Pierce. People always call him the truth, but Paul Pierce, people fail to realize that Paul Pierce wasn't the truth when he was playing by himself. He was a question mark. Because remember, it was him, Antoine Walker, and that crew, and Paul Pierce wasn't the truth then. He was a damn lie. I mean, he definitely, I mean, he definitely had not so good of a, I would say not so good, but he had an okay.